Let's go to the word of God in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 4, verse 1 to 6. The Bible says, and the word of Samuel came to all Israel. Now Israel went out against the Philistines to battle and pitched beside Ebenezer, and the Philistines pitched in Afek. And the Philistines put themselves in array against Israel. And when they joined battle, Israel was smitten before the Philistines, and they slew of the army in the field about 4,000 men. And when the people were come into the camp, the elders of Israel said, Wherefore has the Lord smitten us today before the Philistines? Let us fetch the ark of the covenant of the Lord out of Shiloh unto us, that when it cometh amongst us, it may serve us out of the hand of our enemies. So the people sent to Shiloh that they may bring from thence the ark of the covenant of the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth between the cherubims, and the two sons of Eli, Hophini, and Phinehas, were there with the ark of the covenant of God. And when the ark of the covenant of the Lord came into the camp, all Israel shouted with a great shout, so that the earth rang again. And when the Philistines heard the noise of the shout, they said, What meaneth the noise of this great shout in the camp of the Hebrews? And they understood that the ark of the Lord was come into the camp. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for gathering us in the place of covenant this morning. Lord, I pray that you bless us even as your word comes forth. Touch, heal, deliver transform the lives of your people by the word of God. Because it is the entrance of thy word that giveth understanding to the simple. Let understanding prevail in the hearts of your people. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Now, um, when we were crossing over the new year, the Lord gave us the message that this is going to be the year of uh, possessing our possessions. And uh, the Lord spoke to us from the book of uh, Zechariah chapter 8, from verse 12 to verse 13. And he also spoke to us from the book of Abadiah chapter 1 and verse 17. And... Uh, I want to examine what it is going to take for us to possess our possessions. Because just like the way I have been sharing here about the conditions of prayer, I gave 15 conditions for answered prayer. If you want to see prayer answered in your life. Because as I said before, we don't want to fast. We don't want to just make the 40-day fast to be a, 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 a custom and a culture and a tradition. You know? Uh, I mean, it is only a fool who keeps on doing the same thing without seeing results coming up and, you know, uh, you know just you know, continues doing it. And so I, I, I'm very categorically, you know, even in my prayer time, asking the Lord to show me, you know, what are the things that we need to put in place so that we can see the prophetic word coming to pass. Because God is not a son of a man to tell a lie. His word will not go back to him until it has fulfilled what he has assigned it for. But the thing to note is that God has, we have our part that we need to play. Now, uh, when you look at Obadiah, because it is not just a matter of saying, 
Lord, I possess. I possess my possessions. I take my possessions. I take them now, 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 now. No. God is legalistic. He is a legal God. He follows his word. And at the same time, the devil is also legalistic. He also knows the word of God and he's going to look out for loopholes in your life to try and stop the prophetic promises from coming to pass in your life. So, uh, when you examine that scripture in the book of Abadiah, one thing that comes out very clearly is that it is going to be on Mount Zion. It's going to be on Mount Zion. The Lord particularly gives an address of where you're going to acquire your possessions. There is a particular address upon Mount Zion. Hallelujah. Now, you know, he is not saying uh, 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 upon your workplace or upon your business or, or upon your, your, your intellectual capacity, but he's saying particularly upon Mount Zion. Can somebody say upon Mount Zion? Come on, I don't hear you. Say upon Mount Zion. I shall possess my possessions. Declare it again. Say, upon Mount Zion, I shall possess my possessions. Hallelujah. Now, God does not just speak because he has nothing to speak. There is a reason why he's saying it's going to take place particularly upon Mount Zion. And deliverance is going to come from Mount Zion and there shall be holiness when we stand on Mount Zion. There are conditionalities that God is giving us here that we need to put in place to see the anointing of possessing our positions come into place. Now, when we talk about Mount Zion, we are not talking about that uh, 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 mountain that was so favorite to David, and it also became so favorite to God. In fact, David, David was an amazing guy, because the things that he loved, God also came to love them, you know? I, I don't know whether it is because he had such an intimate relationship with God, that uh, 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 God always deposited in him what was on his heart, and so David, anyway, the way we can put it is David loved the things that God loved. Because Mount Zion runs through in, in, in New Testament. And uh, uh, the, 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 the thing about Mount Zion is Mount Zion speaks about the presence of God. It's the presence of God. It's, God is not telling us to go to Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. <laughs> okay, you can go to Jerusalem and we shall go to Jerusalem. Amen. We, 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 uh, I believe that God is giving us capacity to go to Jerusalem because uh, when you go to Jerusalem, you are able to connect with what is written in the scripture. The Bible comes alive. But what, by the, what the Lord is saying here is this. It's going to take my presence for you to... I mean, on your own, you can do nothing. It doesn't matter how many times you're going to declare... And this is the reason why we are fasting. Child of God, in this season of fasting, spend more of your time praying for spiritual blessing. Don't pray for money. Glory to God. You're not supposed to pray for money. Actually, you're supposed to command money to come forth. You're not supposed to pray for it. Uh, don't pray for, spend time praying for houses and so on. No. Spend time praying, Lord, let me know your ways. Let me go deeper in your presence. Anoint me with your supernatural power. Because to gain my possession, I'm going to need the power of God. Help me to understand the scripture. Let me get to another dimension of revelational knowledge. Spend more time Praying for spiritual blessings. Raise your hand and say, Lord, I need more of your presence. I don't hear that desperation from your voice. Say, Lord, I need more of your presence. I am desperate for more of your presence. Makasaka Rabagadaya. Hallelujah. Because when the presence, as we seek the presence, and as we put our mind on the presence, there is going to be deliverance. 
every generational curse is going to disappear because there is a spiritual atmosphere where certain curses cannot survive there is a spiritual atmosphere where certain iniquities cannot survive there is a spiritual atmosphere where hiv cannot survive there is an atmosphere where cancer cannot survive there is an atmosphere where diabetes cannot survive there is an atmosphere where jobless cannot survive there is an atmosphere where you're gonna enter and you cannot continue using my parties i somebody hearing what i'm saying there is an atmosphere that you can enter and the curses cannot stand it is all about atmospheres that's how the spiritual world works it works in atmospheres so child of god this is the greatest blessing we need to seek the presence and that's why god is saying it is going to be upon mount zion and you know what happens when you enter Mount Zion and he says, there shall be deliverance. What does that mean? Iniquity is leaving you. Transgression is leaving you. Yokes is leaving you. Castle is leaving you. Because of the magnitude of the presence. And what happens after deliverance is what? You're going to live a holy life. Because where some people, they are bound into certain things. They are bound into certain bondages that are so strong over their lives that they are not able to live a holy life. And the devil's strategy from the beginning to remove over the favor of God from your life has always been to take you into sin. So, when you enter Mount Zion, there is going to be holiness. Child of God, we need to live a holy life. But we cannot live a holy life by our own power. I was teaching the people and I was saying that, come on, we, 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 righteousness is more powerful than iniquity. Praise the Lord. Righteousness is more powerful than iniquity. God is bringing us into an atmosphere where we are going to live like the way Jesus lived on earth. Because Jesus lived on earth for 33 years and there was no single day when sin had dominion over his mind or over his thoughts. He lived a holy life. He was blameless. Hallelujah. If Jesus lives in me, the Bible says, sin shall no longer have dominion over my life. We are entering an atmosphere where we are going to live a holy life. We shall never backslide. We shall never sin. We shall never fall. Because righteousness is more powerful than iniquity. Glory to God. The light shineth in the darkness and the darkness cannot comprehend it. Yes, there is darkness, but light is more stronger than darkness. Raise your hand and say, I need more. I need more, I need more of your presence. More Come on, say it from the bottom of your heart. I need more of your, I need more of your presence. Of your, your presence is heaven to me. Holiness is a powerful weapon. It's a powerful weapon. People, you know, people are fasting. People are going for 90 days. People are going for 100 days. But lives are not changing. Because there are conditions. I don't think it's just a matter of going without food. You can do it and do it until Christ comes back. And still there is no visitation. Because you have to do it the godly way. God is going to visit you on his own terms. It's not on your terms. It is on his own terms and his own conditions. So, he says that in the presence of God, the house of Jacob, the house of exploits, the house of Julius Subi, the house of Onyango, the house of Macharia, the house of Akal, the house of Ted shall possess. There is a possession for you this year. You didn't hear what I said. There is a possession for you this year. But it is going to take the supernatural presence. That's why don't break your fast. 
Just as I was praying and I felt some people, they were feeling so weak, they were thinking of, of breaking the fast. I rebuke that thought. Don't break the fast. I had your thought. Your thought came to me. And you were saying, you know? Don't break it. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter. Come out of Kuja Kanisani or get a man of Hallelujah. On a skia uku, nini, on a chomwa. Eh? Matumbos in a chomwa. Osijari, yendelea tu. Wuma meno, yendelea tu. Otamaliza sikwa rubaini, hallelujah. Otamaliza, otamaliza, ambia setani ni tamaliza. Tell your body, I'm not breaking the fast. Oh my God. You have to tell your body because your body listens to what you're telling it. Don't break the fast. That came to me very strongly. Somebody was planning to break the fast. And you're here. But I will not ashamed you, praise the Lord. The presence. It's the presence. It is the presence. Now listen. We have read a scripture in the book of First Samuel. That scripture speaks about a time in Israel when there was moral breakdown. Because without the presence of God, the moral fabric of society is going to break down. That's the reason why. Even us as parents, as we are raising up our children, we cannot raise children on tactics and techniques. We are not raising children telling them, don't do this, 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 don't do this. That can work for some time. But when they are not with you, pressure comes in and they will fall. That's how Lot raised up his children. He raised them up on don'ts. But he never raised them up around the altar. Abraham did not raise Isaac on don'ts. Abraham raised Isaac around the altar. And we see later on, though there were virgins initially, when pressure came upon their lives, you know, and they could not get men to get married too, they decided to give their father alcohol, you know, and, uh, you know, he took alcohol, got drunk, slept with one of them, and I think it, it bathed the nation of the Amorites. And then the second day, the second one also gave him alcohol. I mean, why would girls that left Sodom and Gomorrah as virgins manipulate their father and perform incest in order to have babies? It was because they were raised up under don'ts, and the don'ts can only work when there is no a certain amount of pressure. But when pressure sets in, don'ts don't work. What is going to work is the presence of God. You need to teach your children how to draw the presence of God to themselves. Even when they go to the United States and you're not there and they are at school and they're having challenges, they are going to call upon the presence of God and the Lord will deliver them. Are we together? You need the presence. So, the children of Israel, there was a lot of darkness. Because of what? Because of immorality. The sons of Eli, you know, Eli uh, instituted his sons into the priesthood. And Eli never was a father that never cautioned his, his children. You know, he was not very, very tough on his children. He, he, he kept on hearing reports that they were sleeping with women at the door of the tabernacle. And he did not caution them powerfully. And so what happened was what? Uh, the priesthood went down. And darkness took over the entire nation of Israel. And the Bible says, when you read in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 3, that in those days there was no open vision and the word of God was rare. 
You see, when you entangle yourself in sin, you entangle yourself in immorality, in compromise, and in everything. One of the things that happen, you're going to lose your vision. You're going to lose your vision. You're going to lose the sense of, of, of living in salvation. You're going you're gonna to open your life to demonic attack coming against your life. So, I mean, w w what kind of ministry was that? There was no presence. There was no open vision. There was no rema word. Kurikuwa kumekauka. You're talking about Shiloh, the first place where the tabernacle of the Lord was placed when they went to the promised land. It was a prophetic territory. It was a territory that God had visited several times. But because of the priesthood, that was wicked. The presence of God left the nation of Israel. And you know what happens? In chapter 4, the Philistines come against them. Let me tell you, child of God, when the presence of God leaves you, huh? two things, okay, look, listen, when you have the presence of God upon your life, the Bible says that when a man pleases God, even his enemies are at peace with him. When the presence of God leaves your life, there are going to be many enemies that are going to rise up against your life. Many enemies. People, sicknesses will rise up. You know? People that just want to fight you for no cause, they will rise up. That's why you need the presence of God. You need the presence of God. Child of God, it is better you go down, but in holiness. It's better you lose that job because you refuse to compromise. Because when you lose it, God will open ten more doors. I can promise you. Ten more doors are going to come to you. Than for you to receive and maintain your position through compromise. Not so long from now, you're going to lose it. And when you lose it, you have lost it. You will never get it back. Because the God that is supposed to help you, you've not stood with him. So, the children of Israel, uh, the presence of God left, and Shabako Brekatai. Samuel, prophet Samuel, had, you know, was just rising up in this kind of atmosphere. The sons of Eli, they are doing all wickedness. Listen, God will never get stuck. If you refuse to do the will of God, God is going to raise up somebody else. If you refuse to be faithful, God is going to raise up somebody else. If you refuse to do what God is telling you to do, God is going to anoint somebody else. You know? So, the Philistines was tired up to come and attack the nation of Israel. And they came and attacked the nation of Israel. And at the first attack, Israel was badly beaten. They lost so many men. Why would this happen to a covenant nation, a nation that had driven out nations that were more powerful and more stronger than Israel? You know, God himself testifies through Moses that you drove out nations that were more numerous. Because understand this, Israel could not fight. Israel could not fight. It was a nation of slaves. They had been in slavery for 430 years. These nations, the Jebusites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, and the Philistines and so on, had been a training in military science for about 430 years. How could a nation, one nation, a small nation of slaves who have been beaten in Egypt for 430 years, drive out these superpower nations. It was not them. It was the hand of Jehovah. It was the presence of God that went ahead of them. They did not need to fight. They needed to obey.
And that is what God is saying. This year, if you obey me and move in holiness, I'm going to drive out people that are more powerful than you. I'm going to drive out nations that are more powerful than you. I'm going to give you successful spiritual warfare against the powers of darkness that are trying to rise up against you. Though they be more than you, I'm going to pull them down. And I'm going to give it to you. Some of you, I'm going to position you in jobs where you don't even have patience. And that company is going to sponsor you to go back to school as you're working so that you can get the qualification. Oh my God. Somebody doesn't understand what I'm talking about here. God is about to do the extraordinary in your life. Why? Because of the presence of God. It's the presence of God. Child of God, without the presence of God, we cannot make it. You cannot make it. You cannot overcome the battles of 2017. You will not be able to make it. And this is why we are praying, we are fasting to activate and to trigger a new wave of the presence of God. Because even the presence of God is in measures according to the river of glory that Ezekiel saw in Ezekiel 47. There is the ankle level, there is the knee level, there is the, 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 what is that? The west level. Then there is that level, a big river that you can swim in. I pray that you're going to operate in that kind of atmosphere. So much presence upon your life that things will happen this year. Child of God, the presence of God is very powerful. So, Israel was beaten. And you know what they did? They said, let's bring the Ark of the Covenant. Because the Israelites knew. The Ark of the Covenant signified the presence of God. Huh? They said, no. We went on the battlefield without the Ark of the Covenant. This Ark of the Covenant, in the days of Moses... It went ahead of Israel. In the days of Joshua, it went ahead of Israel. And nations that were powerful were driven away. Let us bring the Ark of the Covenant. Child of God, you need to go walk with the Ark. You need to walk with the Ark. <laughs> Hallelujah. Lose brothers, lose sisters, lose friends. Let people leave you, but let the Ark never leave you. Let the Ark never leave you, my friends. People are going to betray you. People are going to leave you. People are going to pretend to be your friends, but they are plotting for your downfall. But child of God, let the Ark be with you. Hallelujah. Lose everything that you can lose. For the sake of the ark. Hallelujah. Lose everything that you can lose. For the sake of the ark. Because as long as the ark of the covenant is with you. Child of God. You are always going to make a comeback. You are always going to make a comeback. A man with the presence of God can never be written off. Anything can happen anytime, anytime, anytime. Oh my God. I feel, I feel the grace of miracles is descending. I see something descending here. The presence. So the children of Israel called for the ark to be brought. The unfortunate thing was that when the ark was brought, they were still smitten. Why were they smitten? Because you see, you cannot use God like an ATM. Before you can have battles in your life, you must have relationship. Before battles, have relationship with God. So that when battles come, you are not trying to make your relationship with God because the battles have come. You have already been having a relationship even before the battles. And so you can tell God, you know, uh, 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 even before I came into this situation, even before the battle came, I was worshipping you, I was seeking you, I was praying, I was giving my tithe, I loved you. So, even in the midst of the battle, I know that before the battle, you were God. And even in the midst of the battle, you are God, and you're going to see me through the battle that I'm going through. The children of Israel never had relationship. They never had relationship. All they wanted was to bring the Ark of the Covenant 
on the battlefield and then they thought that magic was going to happen. It doesn't happen like that. It doesn't happen like that. You cannot use God. You cannot use God. That's why many people, they don't see, they don't see answers to prayer. I've told you the golden rule of prayer. Answered prayer is John chapter 15 and verse 7. If you abide in me and my words abide or remain in you, you shall ask for what you will. You shall ask for what you will and it shall be given to you. The golden rule of prayer, answer prayer, is Matthew 6.33. Seek you first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto you. It's not a matter of having a situation, having a challenge, and then you rise up and you begin to pray. No! As a matter of fact, I can tell you. When you put your heart on the presence of God, God is even going to give you things that you never asked for. They were defeated. Just like the way many children of God are being defeated. They are using the name of Jesus. They are shouting the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I break it. In the name of Jesus, I bind it. In the name of Jesus, I say devil. In the name of Jesus. Shetani sikiliza marai. Katika jina la yesu. Ninasema otasema shetani atayenda. Because there is no relationship between you and God. Nothing is going to happen. It's not a matter. It's not a matter of using the name Jesus. Why was it that Jesus Christ's prayers were 100% answered by God? The principle was one. He was submitted to his father. That was the principle. It was the governing principle. Whatever he saw the father do, he did. He was totally submitted to his father. And it is the same principle. If we're going to see the name of Jesus working for us, we must be submitted to him even before battles come. Raise your hand and say your presence. I need more of your presence. I need more of your presence. Hallelujah. It's the presence. That word presence, come on, come with me to the book of Exodus, chapter 33, verse 14. The Bible says, and it said, my presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. That is Moses. God was so incensed with the children of Israel that he told them, I will not go with you to the promised land. I'm going to give you my angel, and my angel I'm going to put my name in him and he's going to lead you to the promised land. And Moses say, no, it's not the promised land that we want. If you're not coming with us in the promised land, we cannot go. And then uh, after Moses, you know, I, 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 I love Moses because we learn so much from him, especially in terms of reasoning with God. And God told Moses, my presence shall go with you. My presence shall go with you. That statement is more than a billion dollars. My presence. <laughs> My presence. Can you say, my presence shall go with Julia Subi. Say, your presence go with me wherever I go. go. That statement, my presence is more than a billion, I can tell you. Just that statement Three words. I think there are four. My presence shall go with you. You know why? 
Because you've got to go back to the Hebrew and understand what the word presence means. The word presence from the Hebrew word, it is the word panim. Can somebody say panim? panim. Come on, say it louder than that. Panim. Say louder than that. Panim. Say louder than that. Panim. What does the word panim mean? The word panim means the part of the face that turns around. The part of the face that turns. The part of the face that turns. So when God said, my presence shall go with you, what he meant was, my faces shall go with you. I have different faces. My faces, not my face, but my faces are going to go with you. When you reach in a place and you broke and you need money, I'm going to change my face and I'm going to become Jehovah Jireh. You reach in another place and what you have is not enough. I'm going to change my face and I'm going to become Jehovah El Shaddai. You reach in another place and you seek. I'm going to change my face. I'm going to become Jehovah Rapha. When my presence is with you, provision is with you, abundance is with you, deliverance is with you, more than enough is with you, healing is with you. When you have my presence, you have everything. Raise your hands and say, Lord, let your presence go with me. The secret of the breakthrough of this ministry in the nations of the world has been about the presence. I have gone to nations where I was not known at all. And within three days, auditoriums were packed. Not because of teaching. Not because of teaching. Because you can have wonderful teachings. <laughs> but it is all theology. You know, Jesus said a statement. He said that, I think it is in the book of Matthew. He said that, yeah, when they came and told him about this, uh, this story of this woman who got married to seven men, and they all died. You, you remember that story? You know? And Jesus told them that, uh, and, and they said, Who's, whose, wife shall he, whose wife shall this lady be in the resurrection? And then Jesus said that, you know, you are ignorant. You do not know the power. You know, he spoke about the power and the word. So what I'm trying to say, what he was saying was this. You don't need the word alone. The word must have power. You must have two things. You must have the word. You must have the power. You know? Okay. The presence. So what I'm saying is, what I was telling you is this. The whole secret of the impact that we are having in nations is, is about the presence. It's about the presence. It's about the miracles. It is about the signs and wonders that are taking place in people's lives because it is the presence that does that. Matthew what? 22, 29. Can you put it there? Aha, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Jesus answered and said unto them, you do erry, not knowing the scriptures, nor the power of God. They are two different things. Is there the scripture and there is the power. Don't only have power without scripture. Don't have scripture without power. That is religious fanatism. You need both. Are we together? So, when the presence of God is with us, everything is with you. You may not have the money in your pocket, but the money is around you. Oh my God. Let me tell you, every time when Jesus was traveling, it is not that he had the money with him. He did not have practically the money with him, but he had the money around him. That's why when they went in the temple, they asked for tax. Hallelujah. He did not have the money in his pocket. <laughs> but the money was somewhere. And he told Simon Peter, come on, just go. Go, 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 go. Go to the sea. And the first fish that up, get that fish. And from it, kuna zile pesa zenye zilinjia kwa yu samaki. 
when Jonah fell into the nini. Hallelujah. <laughs> Pesa za Jonah, hallelujah, ziliwekwa. Are you understanding what I'm saying? You don't have the money in your pocket. It is not in your account, but the money is there. It is there. It is there. I release that money. I release that blessing that belongs to you. It is not with you now, but it is around you. Now, I release it into your account. I release it into your pocket. I release that job now. Oh my God. Somebody in the next nine days, you're going to have a testimony of an opening that has taken place in your life. understanding what I'm saying. When the presence of God is with you, you have everything. That's why I never worry. I don't worry. Wajameni, pesa, ziko. It might not be in the money pass, but the money is around. And it may be in you. And the Lord is telling you to give it to me. You may be the fish. Samaki <laughs> alevo. Walk with the presence. You never get stuck. You never, never. I was in the plane traveling, going to Indonesia. I didn't have money, but the money was around me. I don't have transport to take me from Singapore to Indonesia because that was my first time to go to Indonesia. And the person who directed me gave me very wrong direction. I had only $45. I don't have money. You know, and uh, I'm in the plane. A lady touched by God began, they began to talk to me. And then I talked to them. And then they told us, you know, come on, you're a pastor. Because I was praying. They asked me, are you a Muslim? Because for me in the plane, I pray, I pray. At times I even kneel down and pray. I've paid their ticket. If they want to, to remove me out of the plane, because I'm making noise, they have to look for an airport. You know? So this lady was, he said, uh, we've been seeing your mouth moving. Why, why, are you a Muslim? Because it was the month of Ramadan. I said, no, I'm not a Muslim. I'm, I'm a pastor. I said, yeah, you're a pastor. Wow. We are also born again. We are partners with Maurice Cerudo. And, you know, I told them I teach about prayer. I said, Maurice Cerudo has been teaching us prayer. He's our father. He's been teaching us prayer. Okay. Teach us about prayer. I began to teach them prayer in the, in the plane. <laughs> and then they said, come and pray for us. I prayed for them. Presence of God came down. They began to cry in the plane. And, you know, one of them went to the toilet to wash her face because she had cried a lot. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to her to give me $100. She came, she said, Pastor, I was in the toilet. That is the first time I understood that God speaks in the toilet, you know. (laughs) And the Lord told me to give you $100. And she kind of said, Glory to God, thank you so much. Then the next lady seated next to me, she says, the Lord has also spoken to me. She gave me a hundred uh, Singapore dollars. And then we, we, we stopped talking after that. And we, we, you know, when we are about to descend into Singapore, uh, the pilot is announcing we are now descending back on your sickbed and so on. Uh, this other lady wakes up and says, Pastor, I had a dream. And somebody in the dream was telling me you don't have money. That is the father I serve. I don't need to beg from nobody. I have the presence of God. And the lady gave me $200. Now, for you to get 300 US dollars and 100 Singapore dollars on the plane, people who do not know you. And from that day, that lady became my partner. She was a, a rich, powerful businesswoman trading in a juice called noni. She used to give me cartons of noni juice. I used to, to bring it here, a healthy drink. Everywhere I went, I went to China, she followed me. I went where she followed me. She said, ever since I met your life, you prayed one prayer in the plane. Up to now, I still sense the presence of God. So 
what I'm saying is this. When the presence of God is with you, you have, you, you, you don't seem to have it now. Come on, God of God. You don't have your car now, but the car is around you. Oh my God. You haven't met your fiancé now, but your fiancé is around you, somebody. You've not gotten your promotion, but your promotion is around you.